Here we're working on the combustion chamber itself. This will be the primary outer layer of the combustion chamber. And you can see here I've got the marks. I've got it 10 and a half inches long, three and a quarter inches wide. You can see right now I'm marking out where my drill holes are going to be. So you've just watched me make most of my measurements and my marks here on our combustion chamber. This is the main outer wall of the combustion chamber. So right now what we have is a mark up about quarter inch from the leading edge here. And this will be the compressor side of the combustion chamber. We're going to have the tightest hole group here. Every quarter inch we're going to drill a hole. They're going to be really small holes. Next line down here we have one inch spacings between each one of our holes. Then back to here we have a half inch spacing at our center line back to a one inch spacing, and then back to a half inch spacing. We're gonna leave about a half inch between that set of holes at the end. This will be the tail end of the combustion chamber. Uh, from that to the actual edge of the combustion chamber ring itself. So there's about a half inch gap there with no holes at the very end, which I'll show you here once we start drilling it. I just got done showing you shearing out the outer wall of the burn chamber. Now I'm going to take a 3 seconds drill bit and do our first set of holes. And that's the quarter inch spaced holes towards the compressor side of the burn chamber. So here we go. Now we're done with the top set of holes. We're going to drill our second set. And that is going to be with a 3 16 inch drill bit spaced one inch apart. So here we go. We're going to work on our fourth set of holes. We're going to use the same uh, 964 drill bit for that. So now we're working on our final set of holes. These are going to be a 1 8 inch drill bit hole. I'm going to put them every half inch. You can see the marks there. So let's go ahead and drill those. So I rolled the piece that we drilled all the holes in into a circle. I've seam welded that together. Once I got that shape, I set that down on a piece of flat stainless. I traced around it. And with that tracing, I cut out a disc here for this side and another disc here for this side. I centered those discs and drilled a hole and then welded them onto our burn chamber. What I'm doing now is working on the actual drive propeller, as you can tell. And the drive propeller itself was designed to be driven with a force aiming this direction, not coming straight on like this, like our engine's going to be. So it had a, a much longer set of paddles here, and I'm taking this bench grinder and I'm grinding it back. See here, where I'm going to grind down to is right where the end of the paddle is. Right there, you can kind of see where the end of the curvature happens and starts going downhill. So I'm going to bring that right up to that point, right about where my fingertip is. Alright, so there we go folks. You can see how far up I've brought those paddles. There at the end I showed you rolling out some of the extra parts we're going to need. This is the outer wall of the burn chamber. This is going to slide over our burn chamber. That's going to allow the air to come from our compressor fan down into the wall between the two of them, that air gap between them. 
Over here I have a smaller inner piece that I've rolled that's a one inch tube. Those are a quarter inch drill bit holes and they're spaced about an inch apart on the flat sheet. Right now what I'm doing is building the piece that holds our bushings into place inside of the center of the engine. This little piece that you see right here sits right in the center of our burn chamber. And that piece in the center holds those bushings that you see here for our drive shaft that goes through the middle of it. That way our compressor fan and our drive fan are in line with each other right down the center of the engine. I just want to show you the air gap so you can see an air gap between that face plate and the actual burn chamber. Now that we got done mounting the drive shaft with all the bushings and everything into our burn chamber there, I need a way to stick that drive shaft end that's going to hold the compressor fan out of the front of our case here. This is the outer case of the engine. This is going to be the face plate that gets welded onto that case just like that. So our compressor fan's going to sit over here. We're going to have our diffusers on this, the holes and everything there. We're trying to mount our rotor to the burn chamber here, which will then be mounted to the outer case. And one of the things I needed to do is be able to have a mounting point to the inner rotor holder uh, to the outer case itself for the burn chamber. And this ring that you're looking at is what I've been able to come up with. So I've used those L brackets I showed you earlier. I've trimmed them down a little bit. I've cut a circle out in the middle of this disc. I cut the outside to fit the diameter I was going to need for the front face plate here to the burn chamber. And then I've mounted those to those L brackets. So if I bring that up close, you can see there. Just cut those off, riveted those through with a stainless rivet. Uh, one of the other parts of this I needed to have was the ability to mount all of this to the face of the uh, outer case here. And that's going to be this ring right here that actually goes on before we put on this other ring. The next piece of this here is going to be the nozzle, the thrust nozzle around our drive fan there. I just showed you a time lapse of putting this all together. I've thrown some rivets in the back just to show you the engine from the side. The only thing missing from the combustion chamber is the actual outer case here. We've got the front plate, the back plate on there that'll actually make the seal on either side of the combustion chamber itself. Uh, we have our actual burn ring in the middle there. We have our compressor fan out here in the front. We have our thrust collar around the dry fan here in the back. Go ahead and turn that. So there you go. There is our full engine inside of its combustion chamber. You can see the dry fan coming out of the thrust collar into where our afterburner is going to be there. Just showed you the engine without the outer part of the case put on. We just had the two flat outer discs, the front and the back face there. We had the inner part of the burn chamber, the thrust collar, and everything set up and ready to go. I've now welded on our outer part of the burn chamber. This will allow the airflow to go between this chamber and the inner part of the burn chamber with all the holes in it and then into the combustion chamber there. You can see I've just tack welded all the way around on the back side. So our back side of our combustion chamber, the inner part of that is now permanently mounted to the outer case. And then here on the front, you can see a little ring going around. And what I've done is just used a piece of flat strap. I rolled that so it would fit perfectly around our cylinder. That rolls over the top of the two pieces and then is welded onto there. And that gave us a airtight seal band around it. And then I just put our front disc over that and I've now tack welded that front disc all the way around. So it's now permanently attached to that ring. So we can pull this off of there. Once I remove the actual compressor fan, we can slide that up off of there, allowing us access to all our bushings and everything inside of our engine. So if you need to do any replacement, that'll also allow us a little bit later here in the project to do all the mounting inside of there for our fuel and our oil lines. Real quickly here, I just want to pull off our cap so you can see what's underneath there. You can see the air gap now between the inner part of our combustion chamber there and the outer part of our combustion chamber. So just got done tack welding on our afterburner collar there. You can see it. Just want to give you a look down into it there. So there you go. There's a area there between the actual thrust collar around our dry fan and the actual afterburner collar. And we're going to install our fuel ring down into that area. Next, we need to build basically the intake to our engine. Now that we've got the back end, the main body, and all the combustion chamber done, we need to build an intake. So we're going to start out with the very center of that intake where it matches up with the edge of the compressor fan. And I need something I can sculpt. So we're going to use aluminum, this nice thick piece of aluminum tubing. This is the exact diameter of the outside edge of the top of that compressor fan. So it's the exact size we're going to need. We'll use these screws to bolt it on in the end from whatever I design. 
Um, right now what I'm going to do is basically sculpt this inside edge to fit the compressor that that shapes to, and then I'll wrap the outside here with more thinner aluminum until I get the thickness I need to match the entire width of that compressor, and then I'll sculpt that aluminum with the Dremel tool until I get it the right shape. Now we're on to the rest of the housing that's going to hold this piece. It's going to go over the top of the actual diffuser plate and all the rest of this. So here's what I've been able to come up with. If I turn it sideways, you're going to be able to see that I've added a section of rolled aluminum all the way around here. And that's sitting inside of a collar that I have welded on, a stainless steel collar, right to the ring that goes over the face of our combustion chamber. So we can now actually pull this off, and this will be holding our full intake nozzle and all the rest of the front end right there. We'll be able to pull that off of the engine. So I've got these couple discs. I've cut out the centers of them. The centers are the right size for the intake center here. They're going to sit down inside of our outer ring centered. And those are going to mount to this piece here and to our outer ring, giving me a nice rigid mount. So we've got one that's going to mount up here at the top. The other disc is going to mount right down at the bottom and act as the top plate to our diffuser. So all the air is going to run underneath this plate itself, which is going to be sitting right at the bottom edge of this piece here and I'll show you that once I complete building that. I'll actually slide up inside of there then I'll rivet it into place and that'll hold our intake piece right above the compressor fan the way it's supposed to and gives the air gap that we need over the diffuser plate itself. We've got our lower discs down in there that's the one that sits as the top plate to our diffusers. You can see the little L brackets here I'm riveting those into place I've got them riveted from the lower disc to the outer wall to our spacer disc and through and then I'm riveting them down to that lower disc there so I'm building that piece first I'll do some fill-in work around the edges there to make sure all the air gaps are filled in and then I'll set our top disc on there here's a quick shot at the diffuser plate I just got done drilling all the holes this is where the air from our compressors goes into the combustion chamber finish the intake portion for the turbojet part of our engine and you can see here what it looks like from the side Nice little front shot to it. To build our ramjet intake, what we're going to do basically is add a bunch of reed valves to this front plate right here. They'll be on the underside of the plate. The valves themselves, the way you're seeing it now, will be flipped around on the underside. All we're going to see up here are the drilled holes that will sit underneath the valves. And what I'm making those out of is this. Is I have some spring steel reed valve from another pulse jet engine that I have, and I've been trimming those down. First of all, I go through and I drill a hole in each one of the little leaves from that. Then I trim off the leaves to look like what you see there, one of these. And I'm going to set three of them between each one of the mount points here, between my rivet points. I'm going to set three of them in. They each have their own little screw so you can remove them and replace them. What I'm doing now is finishing the afterburner section of our engine. I had to lay out a grid on here so that I could have the marks I needed to drill a bunch of holes across this. And those are quarter inch little squares, little quarter inch spacings between each one of them all the way across. And I'm going to go ahead set this down on the drill press and I'm going to go to work just popping those out. So I've completed our drill pattern on here and what we have is we have 80 1 8 inch holes and we have 40 1 16 inch holes. I've got the afterburner rolled, I've got it welded together we can slide it down inside of our collar here. That means it's removable to get to the fuel line there. Give you a quick look up into it. So what this is going to do is act similar to a gasifier with all these holes here. We're going to now build an outer case around all of this. And that outer case is going to have an airflow passing over the engine created by a Venturi from the gases and the hot exhaust from our turbojet engine inside of this. So let me show you an easy way I was able to come up with of removing our ramjet bypass tubes from the intake cowling in a way so we could still remove the intake cowling from the engine. I've created some D-rings for these and you just push them all the way out. You should be able to kind of turn this and then rotate that up. And there, our ramjet bypass tubes are now detached from our intake cowling. And that is just a piece of brass all thread that I threaded down into the sidewalls. Then I used a Dremel tool and removed all the threads so it was smooth. That way it could fit inside the opening here of our elbow. Now you can see the D-ring and how it works. So once again, you're just gonna rotate this around right onto there. Expand the D-ring out a bit so it can go on. Push the D-ring down, and then with a pair of pliers, you're just gonna kind of clamp down that D-ring so it seals on there and it won't be able to come off. Once it's on there, that makes a nice tight 
hook to it with a little bit of an o-ring or a high temperature o-ring or gasket right there we should be able to keep a nice airtight seal with that so that was a simple way that i could attach those ramjet bypass tubes down here they're actually welded on so the four pipes will always be attached to the actual ramjet portion of the engine next step of this is to start mounting our reduction thrust collars here so they're basically going to reduce down the size from our combustion chambers down a little bit to help increase our thrust so here's our primary one that we've just attached to the back of the ramjet portion of the engine and what that's going to go into is basically this collar right here is going to mount somewhere right about there we've got our secondary thrust collar now installed this air gap that you see between the primary and the secondary thrust collars here that is typically where the tertiary doors are going to go we're always going to have that air gap open to the outside of the engine the air being drawn across the engine will draw through these holes into the interior all the air coming into this air ring right here will actually be drawn from outside the engine one of the next parts of this project was to build a retracting intake spike. One of the ways I figured out how to do it was this. First of all, I designed this intake spike. Looks a lot more like the one that's actually on the SR71's intake. Um, inside of there, I have a set of rivets right up here in the front that are set up opposing each other. And what I do is I just set the spring way up in there and then I start twisting. And I'll twist it on there and those two rivets sit in between the metal sides here on the spring and I can twist it and bunch it up right into the nose here, basically stopping up in there. And that'll give us a spring to retract back on, give us a little return pressure. So when the intake pressure recedes a little bit or decreases, the spring can push the intake spike back out a bit. So let me go ahead and I'll slide it on there, I'll twist it down and I'll put it onto the intake cavity here and I'll show you what it looks like. Here's what it looks like with the intake spike sitting there on the intake cavity we've got it hooked up to the spring it'll pull it right back on there and you'll notice there's a downward lean to the intake spike that's just like the original SR71's intake spike when it's at rest it's going to have a downward lean to it and that's for the same reasons basically on a spring you've got a little bit of a lean as the velocity increases pressure against the spike is going to start lifting it up and pushing it further and further back and that's going to be all the way back on our intake spike and you'll notice it straightens out it's nice and in line. The aerodynamics are going to be nice. I'm working on the outer case to our turbo ramjet engine. This is the main body of that case and I want it to be able to open up so we can get to everything. We can attach our fuel lines, oil lines, etc. And to do that, I went down to the brake and I made these uh, little L channel pieces. And there's gonna be one here on the bottom and another one that goes up here on the top. So when that folds over, they come together nicely, create a nice seal. One of the sides, we're gonna put a piece of piano hinge on for the hinge itself, but both sides will have these brackets. And what that gives us, is the two faces here that will come together right down on there that will give us a place to put a sealing material. So I have now a hinged two-part case for our engine. Here I've got, if I get the angle right, you can see this little open groove between two layers there. It would be very difficult for me to do this with one hand, but that fits right down inside of those two layers there and gives us a perfect seal. Sorry, trying to do that with one hand. There you go. So there's the outer main section of the body now ready to go. It's hinged. It's got a seal area. This is where we'll put a couple screws. And I'll undo those screws so that I can open up the case. And then we can access the engine just like this. Here's the completed intake reduction cone and the retaining ring for the front end of our engine here. And hopefully I can get this with one hand. So it's right down on there. A few screws put into this and that'll now hold our case together as well as be the intake to the front end of our engine. The next step of the project was to be able to mount our rear cone to the outer case and still make it so we could open the case up on the hinges. The way I was able to do that was this, just two simple rings. I rolled one ring and then pressed that in on the inside edge of the outer case. And then to make it seamless, I rolled a second ring and then put that down over the top of the interior ring. And then left just one eighth of an inch of a ring 
edge sticking out over right here between the inner and the outer rings and what that does is hides the edge of our cone down inside that that little bit of a lip inside of there that way there's no way the air can grab it we're going to screw the cone down to this piece with these little tangs i still got to put four more in there there'll be eight all together and then here you'll notice on the bottom side there's rivets on both the main case and the outer part here then when I flip it over to the section that has our hinge, so the bottom part here has no hinge and then the top is going to be screws on the part that opens on our main case here. And then rivets obviously on the part in the back, just our air lip, just to make it a nice smooth edge all the way across, seamless. I'm now done with the outer case itself. I've showed you building all the pieces to that, how to attach the rear reducer, building the front end uh, retaining clip and the reducer that goes on the front end itself. We're able to hinge that to get to our engine. I've got to build a few ribs that are going on the top and the bottom of this and some mounting brackets to hold the engine down itself. For the most part, our engine housing is ready to go. We can now start working on that part of it. Real quick here, let me go ahead and just shut it all up so you can see what it looks like. Squeeze that down in the back, squeeze that down in the front. It's nice and tight, so it's gonna take me just a second to get it on there, there we go. There is the outer body to our engine. So we're ready to go with that. Now we just need to mount the engine inside of that and work on our fuel system and our oil system. Here, outside of this main construction video, I'll show you a few ways that you can make some simpler compressors that are not gonna give you much extra compression. Right now to make a turbo ramjet engine actually function pretty well with what we have, I need to double the compression that we already have from this compressor. And the way we're gonna do that is basically build another one of these, almost identical to it, that's going to have double the ratio as the size of the input this one has. So instead of having half inch lead blades as the intake blade size, we're going to have a one inch lead blade size. And instead of reducing down to one eighth inch, we're reducing down to three eighths inch. So we're doubling everything's size and volume, and we're gonna keep the exact same compression ratio. How we're gonna build that little compressor is just like this. So that's what it starts out as, just a simple flat piece. I fold a 57 degree angle. I set up the line here for the next break. I mark where I'm gonna cut that break so I have a one inch face plate. And when I'm done with that, it looks like this. So basically you have a fold over down here, you got a fold over on that side. Those are where it's gonna to mount to the top and the bottom plate. That's where the compression is gonna take place. This one inch wide leaf here is going to come up from the center drive rod and with some pliers and stuff, I'll actually curve a little bit of a curvature to all of them when it's finally done, just to get them to scoop the air just right while mimicking the curvature that you see on the face of those blades. The outer edge is kind of curved over a bit. So we can do that with this. Next, what we're gonna to wanna to do with each one of these, is we're gonna take a flat plate, cut it in a disc, just like that, and I use two washers, just like this. I put one out in front, you can see it at the tip of my finger there. I use the flat plate, and then behind that, we have another one of those washers. So all I'm really doing is I'm cutting right here at the corner, I cut back a half inch, I make sure I make a little bit higher cut on the raised leaf edge there, so that way it's got the spacing for the washer edge to sit in there. And I push those down in between that aluminum plate and that top washer until they're sitting right up next to each other. And you gotta cut each one of them a little bit of a pie shape so they'll fit in eight of them. And once we get those all pushed into that, I'll tighten it all down. I'll drill through the bottom plate down here where we have that bottom little fold over. I'll drill through and I'll put a couple of little rivets through that to hold them down onto the bottom plate. And then up here on top, We'll basically take a ring, we'll set that down over the top of the compressor, I'll roll out a tube. It's gonna be a little bit higher than the height of the top of the blades here, just to give us kind of a draw and it'll feather out just a little towards the front of it. I've installed all eight blades. They're not riveted down yet. I just pushed them all in, tighten it down a bit. You can see how nice and aggressive that's gonna turn out. Put a piece of all thread all the way through this. This will be the piece that actually the drive bolt rides down through the center of that. And we'll kind of compress it into place, probably even pin it just to keep it there due to the RPMs. Uh, real quickly here, let me zoom in so you can see the cuts I've made on each one of those blades. If it'll focus for us. You can see the little angle out cut, kind of a little L cut in the blade up there where it comes up to the top, just against the all thread. That was designed so that we got that nice front look to it right there. Just a little bit of a cap over the all thread. 
and that'll give us a really nice high volume, high compression front compressor to our turbo ramjet engine. So let me show you just how I put this together. First of all, I found these little tiny 16th inch rivets. Not eighth inch, but actual 16th inch rivets. And you'll notice they barely stick up inside of there. They're not impeding my airflow much at all. That's how I was able to rivet the bottom plate down to those blades that I showed you. Then the top plate here was that ring I showed you. I just made a slice in it, carefully kind of brought that slice down to a bit of a cone. That way we could match the reduction in our blades here with the cone. Rolled out a ring, the right size for the, the rays in our blades, twice the height of the rays. And then with some L brackets, just riveted to that ring and then down right into the top edge of those blades. So it's a multi-purpose rivet point right there. So there you go. This is how you can build a real compressor fan to add to your turbo jet or turbo ramjet engine project. So I've got a bearing system now mounted so we can get that to spin. Let me go ahead and pull it off of there so you can see what's going on. What I have is a standoff that I built. That standoff is exactly the same distance as the edge of our compressor blade here. That way the air will flow nice and freely right off the edge of the compressor, back around. Basically, we're gonna use this area as the diffuser. It's gonna come back around and then into our second compressor there. Uh, that should give us about eight to one compression, really close to eight to one compression. Here's the completed compressor now, ready to go to install on our turbo ramjet engine. A little stiff due to the brand new bushings and all the holes and everything need to be run for a moment just to get it loosened up a bit, but it's nice and centered. This will move a lot of air for us as a primary or first stage compressor and then down through the entire system, down into our second stage compressor. And if there's anything extra, it's gonna come out right here into our ramjet engine. I've also installed a frame now. This frame is the beginning of the mount to hold our electric starter motor. So I'll start building some pieces to mount off of this for that motor to mount to. And we'll be able to spin this thing up to 20,000 RPMs. Just want to give you a quick look what that compressor we just got done building now looks like attached to our turbo ramjet engine. We now have a large high volume compressor stage, a turbulator stage, and then our final second compressor stage here. This should give us all we need to really get this engine up and running. Here's the motor mount I was able to put together. I've got a block of aluminum that I drilled down into, made sure there was a spot so I could push the electric motor down into it, the screw holes to hold the electric motor to that block. And then off the block, I just drilled through for some bolts to hold onto our L brackets here. And that goes down to the end of an old electric motor that had high speed bearings in it. And the bearings were still good. So you can see the bearing right there. You can see the bushing coming right up to the underside of the bearing. So we have a bearing and a bushing up here in the front. That gives us pretty nice stability. It keeps it rigid for the long length of the drive shaft. Um, here I have a bushing to bushing contact down at the bottom with a pin going through it. You can see the end of the pin sticking out. Here you can see the pinhole that goes into the splines for the electric drive motor. Real simple, just push the pin in and we'll lock that into place. Not hard to do. Now we're ready to actually spin this. Now that we've built the compressor, let's go ahead and test this out. I've mounted it to the front of our turbo ramjet engine. I've removed the ramjet portion of it so I could block off all the output holes from the intake for the ramjet. We now have the electric motor ready to go, hooked up to that compressor. I've disconnected the secondary compressor so we're only running our front one right here just to test it out. I have a candle set up here with an extra size wick in it. I just want to see from about eight or so inches from behind the engine just how much we blow that around. Let's go ahead and give it some power. Here's a quick shot of all the pieces for the engine that we've built so far. Everything's basically done other than we need to build some mounts to hold the engine inside the case and the fuel and the oil system. Other than that, this is it. So these are all the different pieces that you would have to build to produce a turbo ramjet engine similar to what I'm showing you here. We've got our main body, you've got the intake cone there and retainer ring. We have our ramjet engine and afterburner portion here, the combustion chamber to the main turbo jet, the cowling for our first stage compressor, the intake there for our second stage compressor, the final thrust reduction nozzle, we have our diffuser and our second compressor blade right there, we have our primary compressor that we built there, our electric starter motor, our drive fan and our rotor, and then our intake spike. Here's a quick shot of what it would look like if we were, let's say, at Mach 2 with an engine like this. The intake spike would be pushed all the way back into the furthest back position that it can go and the gap between the back side of the intake spike and the reduction collar here on the intake 
would be very, very small. And if you notice that the reduction collar is slightly smaller in diameter, and then the intake spike itself's widest points. That way the air that's coming off the spike and into the intake has to kind of deflect and reflect a few different times inside of that channel before entering into the rest of our engine. That would slow down that supersonic velocity air into a subsonic velocity high pressure air before entering the engine. Now that we've completed our engine, we need to work on the fuel, oil, and the ignition system. To start out with, we're gonna add a little spark plug to start this thing up. And what I was able to find was this stainless steel nut at the local hardware store. We're gonna drill a hole right there in the top of the combustion chamber. We're gonna set that nut on there and weld it into place. The nut has the right threads on it for this little nitro spark plug from RC style engines. And we're gonna throw that right into the top just like that. I have the nut now welded on. I've got it ground down, ready to go. So all we have to do now is add our little spark plug to this. And there we go. We now have an ignition system for our turbo ramjet engine. Now that I've added our spark plug to the engine, we're gonna to need to work on our fuel system. We're gonna run the fuel system with this fuel pump right here. This is a 145 PSI fuel pump from a 500 horsepower turbocharged vehicle. And the reason I'm using it is due to the 145 PSI that it generates. From the fuel pump, we're gonna go into basically a fuel ring just like this. This one here is for the ramjet engine portion of it. It's gonna sit right up inside of the back end of it just like this with the end coming out going to the fuel line. I'm installing right now three little jet points on this ring so that we'll have plenty of fuel to dump into the afterburner and into the ramjet engine portion here. I'm working on the flame holder sections that go around our fuel line for the ramjet engine. I'm just using some flat strip stainless just like this, trimming them down. The little horseshoes, pushing those around the fuel line and then crimping them on, creating basically a little V around each one of my jets. Here's a quick shot of the completed flame holder for you. Let me go ahead and install that into the back side of the ramjet engine. I'll show you what it looks like. Dot of that fuel ring with the flame holder installed. Let me flip it around. You can see from this direction how all those V's are going to work, especially with the flow kind of straightening them all out. Now if you have a pinch roller, that would be a lot easier just to roll that out of one piece with the V already in it. I didn't have a pinch roller where I'm at right now, so I just decided to do it with little pieces. I'm working on installing our vaporizer or atomizer tubes inside the combustion chamber here. And what these are basically is a tube with some holes up here towards one of the sides. The other side of the tube is actually blocked off, welded, and then ground down. That way nothing can get out that side. The whole sides up here is going to sit right flush just below the surface at the very beginning of our combustion chamber. This is the compressor side of the chamber, not the drive side. And what that's going to do is sit down just like that, down inside the combustion chamber and allow fuel to be sprayed from our fuel lines way down here at the very bottom of the tube. Now the tubes are inside a hot zone inside that combustion chamber. Once the fuel enters into that as a liquid, it's gonna become vaporized inside that heat. The vaporized fuel is gonna come out of these holes here right into the very beginning of our combustion chamber, which is the actual combustion zone. From there, it'll enter into the region of the combustion chamber where the bigger holes are, and that's the saturation zones. That helps kind of just overload the entire stream with a bunch of extra air so that air could be heated and expanded. Our fuel vaporizer tubes are now welded into place, recessed down into the combustion chamber. I've got a fuel ring ready to go. We've got our fuel lines coming off of that. And what this will do is basically go just like this right down to each one of those just like that so now we have our fuel line our fuel atomizers and our fuel delivery tubes ready to go everything's installed We've got a little notch in the case for the fuel line to come out of the case when the lid sits down on there we are now done with almost every bit of the construction for our turbo ramjet engine. We finished our fuel lines. I've just installed the ramjet back on the turbojet engine portion so you can see the two fuel lines we've just installed. They both come up to the front of the engine where it'll be much cooler. I can hook a different kind of fuel line up to it. You can see our oil line coming up right here. Now the diffuser that goes down right behind this bushing here and then through the rest of our bushings through the turbojet to make sure they don't seize up on us. Here's a quick update at the end of the film. We're going to go ahead and replace this supposed 20,000 RPM motor with this 50,000 RPM motor with a 60 amp motor controller. So that'll be the one thing that'll be different between the construction video and the actual fire up video. Until next time, I hope you enjoyed. This was Mr. Teslonian.